Good afternoon. Today we're talking about Dios de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. Joining me is Edith Craig, the director of the St. Charles Public Library. Welcome, Edith. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me today. I'm so excited. I see you brought some interesting stuff for us to look at today. Can you explain a little bit about it? Sure. So every year, our family um, puts together this table, our altar, um, and we decorate it. It is pictures of loved ones that have passed away. And so every year, this is their time where we take to celebrate their memories. Um, and we talk about um, just memories of, of being with them. And we light candles. And traditionally, we also have um, bread on the altar. I didn't bring any bread today, but yep, we're in a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is what we would set up at home, and um, where we would gather and talk about loved ones. Um, Edith, what kind of culture celebrate um, with the altars and the Day of the Dead uh, festivals? Sure. Well, in Mexico, this is a traditionally a Mexican tradition. Um, this happens more often than not at a cemetery where um, the cemeteries in Mexico, most of the tombs are above ground and um, they are long and wide and there's pictures already on the gravestone. It's more like a shadow box. Um, and family members gather and they have a meal, they share a meal and they celebrate um, the people who have passed away and talk wonderful memories and it's just a day to remember them um, so that they can be present in, in, in our lives. That's really beautiful, and I love all the colors and just taking that time out to remember our loved ones. Um, so we're going to make our um, own marigolds, which is a very important flower during um, this time of season um, in this culture. Um, so we're going to start, and we're going to need tissue paper. Um, typically marigolds are like an orange or a yellow color. Um, sometimes I see them with uh, dark red colors. Um, but I think usually orange is primarily used for, um, for altars for Day of the Dead. Um, so once you have your tissue paper, you're going to need a stapler, a pen, a pair of scissors, and something with a circular edge. So that way we can trace it. We both have mugs here today that we can um, trace ours with. Um, so now we're going to go step by step and show you how to make our marigolds. So we'll each take a sheet of tissue paper. Um, this is really great because it already has folds in it, so we're just going to use those folds already in the tissue paper. If you need to fold them a little bit differently so it uses most of the paper, that's okay too. We're going to end up crumpling the paper a little bit so it's, it's going to hide any like weird imperfections. From there, you're going to fold it in half again, like a hamburger if you will. And then again, fold it in half one more time. Um, the idea is to have at least um, eight or nine layers of tissue paper, and by folding it in this manner, you do get that amount. And this just happens to be the perfect amount to have two circular shapes on the bottom here. Um, your mug might be a little bit bigger, or it might be a little bit smaller, depending on which circle you use, um, but this works great for what we're doing here. So we'll trace our bottoms. Don't worry about your lines because we will cut that part off and you won't be able to see it at all. As I said, there's just enough for two. And if the tissue paper gets cut off a little bit, like it doesn't fill up the entire circle, that's okay. All right, there we go, now we have two circles. Next, we're gonna take our stapler and we're gonna staple across right smack dab in the middle of our circles. Okay, so if you have a fancy pair of scissors that has like the little fancy edges, you can do those, but you can make a pair of regular scissors work just as well. I like to cut my two circles apart just so they're not hanging from each other. The staples will hold all your layers in um, together so they won't slide around. And then I like to do like a wavy line right inside your drawn line so it cuts off all that extra marker shape or coloring.
From there, we're gonna take one layer at a time. We'll pull it up. All my layers are still stuck together, that's okay. And we're gonna kinda of scrunch it up towards the center. You wanna scrunch it tight enough so it's freestanding. And then do this for each layer around it. It can be pretty tight. Don't do it so tight that you rip your tissue paper. <laughs> Mexico when we gather and we do things like this it's always fun to have Mexican bread oh uh, what do you call it is it a special is it a special name so this this bread is called conchas which in Spanish or in English means shells because they look like seashells um, they're round bread and on the top it has you know brightly colored sugar coating um, that makes it look like a shell. And so we always enjoy those for breakfast or when we gather around with friends and some, of course, either hot chocolate or coffee, depending on your taste. Oh. This reminds me of, of that, this color. Some of my other friends of Mexican descent dip it in their milk. Ooh, <laughs> that sounds tasty. This part's time consuming, but it'll be worth it. Wow, you're much faster than I am. <laughs> Almost looks like a flower bud. It does. And then you're just opening. Yep. Good. All right, now that you have your bud, you can gently pry open the different layers. pretty good. How's yours going? I think so. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> it's that easy. It's so easy. And they look gorgeous, especially on an altar. I've seen people make like headbands out of them. Mm -hmm. So you can wear them in your hair. Your hair. Um, wear them on your wrist. Oh yeah. That's wonderful. Is there anything you'd like to else you'd like to share with us before we go for the day? I think traditionally just one thing about the sugar skulls is they're called sugar skulls because normally if you see them at a grocery store they're made out of sugar. They can be edible but <laughs> mainly they're for decoration. Um, this one is not made out of sugar it's just a, an actual decoration but that sounds really great. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it just eating pure sugar though. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Edith, for joining us and telling us a little bit about Day of the Dead. Thank you for joining us on Making Marigolds. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when new Crafternoon videos are posted. Thank you. Adios.